Hi, welcome to Rapid Art. I'm here with my friend James Graham. I've known James for is it decades now? Maybe decades. Yeah, yeah, multiple decades. At least two, more than two, full decade. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to just read it. It's All right. Not, I don't know who wrote it, but I think it sounds good. Okay. Oh, hey, first of all, can you say Bunganuck for me? Bunganuck. So I did okay? You did great. Bungan I've been practicing. Good job. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have no relevant questions for you, but I can pronounce Munganuk. Oh, well, that's all that matters, I guess. Well, I kind of wanted to go, you know, I thought I would deal with the more important issues at hand and then, uh, okay. Anyway, James grew up or James Graham grew up on the prairies of South Dakota, attended Northern State University and the University of South Dakota, where he received a BFA in painting minoring in classics and humanities. He worked and painted in the Midwest until 2015 when he moved to Maine. Graham's work is represented in private and museum collections, too numerous to mention here. I'm gonna skip that part because it is really a uh, pretty impressive list. Um, he is the recipient of a South Dakota Arts Council Emerging Artist Grant in 1993 and two Southwest Minnesota Arts Council's individual artist grants founded by the McKnight Foundation in 2012 and 2015. Since 2004, Graham has lived with the effects of chronic neuro Lyme's disease, which limits his painting activity, usually to just a few hours a day. The various symptoms of the Lyme's changed how he approaches painting to a more immediate, looser style over the last 12 years. Um, these physical limitations, combined with extensive reading of art history, philosophy, theology, and criticism, have informed and formed Graham's personal style. Hey, man, it's good to have you here. It's good to talk to you. Hey, man, good to be here. Thanks for I asking. Thought, yeah, I thought maybe it would be kind of important to maybe read that just because I think, you know, you were pretty active in everything you know the south dakota art scene for a number of years and there's a lot of people out there that you know maybe will watch this that maybe aren't sure exactly what happened to you where you're at what you're doing <laughs> yeah oh no i mean really i run into people all the time that are like you know james right yeah what happened to him I imploded. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I I moved to uh, well, I was you know I uh, as an artist uh, in South Dakota or, or anywhere. I mean, you unless you uh, happen to uh, uh, meet the right people at the right time, you you kind of are forced to uh, uh, work jobs, you know, to uh, pay for your your habit. Hmm. And uh, uh, we want to make it clear that, that the habit is painting, right? The habit is painting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Where are we going uh, further? So, okay. Good. Good to clarify. Um, yeah, the other stuff I gave up years ago. Um, so uh, I was working at a radio station, and my wife at the time was teaching, and. Uh, she got a chance to move to Minnesota and basically make what we were both making in her, uh, for a salary. And, uh, that was going to free me up to do more painting time. And, uh, uh, I was working, uh, two jobs, uh, along with the radio job. And, uh, so we moved to Minnesota, uh, long story short. And, uh, um, I, I started painting, uh, more and then I got sick. And uh, 
uh, um, anyway, uh, so that, that greatly reduced my painting again. Uh, and uh, eventually I found myself uh, in, in Maine. And, uh, uh, Where you've kind of become... Yeah, and in Maine, you're, you've become active in the arts community and you're, you're working and showing and... and um, try, trying to, yeah. <laughs> doing some really great work, meeting some people, it sounds like. Making some connections. Yeah, uh, I got to meet with uh, and and befriend John Yao, which was a real, uh, real pleasure for me to uh, to. Uh, I met him in Minneapolis many years ago, and uh, actually he came over to us uh, for a studio visit. Uh, I guess it's been a year ago now, and uh, that was really nice to have him here. Right, and, and for people that are listening that don't know John Yao, he's a art critic, a poet. And a pretty, um, you know, I, I haven't met him, but there, he has a number of videos on, on YouTube or, you know, his yeah. talks have been recorded and he's, you know, if you're looking for a real positive voice, somebody to listen to, to, I mean, to, for a little hope, he's a good guy. I think he's, he, he, he his reading of art is, is really, uh, uh, wonderful. Uh, he's 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 always been one of my favorite art writers uh, since I uh, uh, found him or was introduced to his work. Um, I was introduced to him as an art writer before poet, but his poetry is, is phenomenal. Uh, but I, I gush too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is about uh, you. Yeah, right. Uh, but he came to my studio, and and he didn't uh, he didn't say what I was doing was awful. So I, I figure that's a, a coup. <laughs> um, okay. So this was um, I mean originally these interviews were supposed to talk about a little bit about how artists are dealing with um, this new normal with the pandemic and all that. And maybe sure. hopefully bring some people together um, somehow. I haven't figured yeah. that part yet. <laughs> it's bringing <laughs> me together with people, but which I'm grateful <laughs> for. Um, but I mean, like, what have you? Um, I mean, is, do you have a new normal? Let, let's say uh, I have a like. What? How are you at social distancing? How's that working for you? Well, you know, it, it, it's, it it's a kind of a it's an old joke by now, you know, it's like, you know, I, I lived as an artist uh, and I kind of stayed in my studio, painted, you know, did my little thing. And uh, that, that hasn't really changed much. Uh, uh, I do, I do miss uh, being able to get out uh, uh, because of my uh, limitations. You know, I, I, I'm uh, highly susceptible to, uh, this disease. So I'm so I've been quarantined since March. Mm. Uh, quarantine, uh, just laying low. Um, the 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 problem has come in the tension with the cultural uh, situation, and uh, just constantly waiting for the next next shoe to drop. And uh, there's been so many shoes dropped. You'd think you were at a George Bush press conference. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. See yeah, if anybody that, remember. That's um, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, the social distancing is not a problem, and um, or is it? Uh, I mean, have you done anything to? Sorry, I gotta. I I have to figure out a way to turn notices off when I start doing ah, things. I thought it was a fairy. <sighs> if only. Um, uh, okay. What was I, where was I, man? I was, do I, um, okay. So, sh all right. So, um, how about, uh, I mean, you know, it, have you done anything to kind of, um, deal with this new, new way of approaching the art world or living in, you know, whatever, part of the art world you've found yourself in 
um, is there uh, a new way to, well, I mean, I guess what I thought is your website, it looks really great. Is that something that's kind of new? Is that a way of maybe reaching, I had a better transition for this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, uh, but uh, I mean, it's, it's your, you know, the website, it seems like a online presence is kind of like a big thing for a lot of artists right now. You know, they're, we're at home. We have maybe more time. Um, I, I like having the web web page because it it, it kind of has taken the place of a business card. Uh, you 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 run into people. Um, I mean, I, I I say that, but I still have business cards. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, two. I actually I use the two. Uh, I use the two uh, 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 together. I, I hand because the business card has my website on it. And uh, I can always tell after I hand out my business card because I usually get a couple of visits to my web page. Um, so I can see the tangible effects of having a, 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 a good website. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's important for that aspect because back when you and I started, uh, uh, started this, this this sham of a business we uh you know it used to be that you would go and visit the gallery uh you would uh, uh see what they're showing uh take time to know, meet the gallerist uh introduce your work uh sometimes they'd want to see you, you give them slides which you know was was an incredible effort to to get that done slides if you remember and uh oh yeah um yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's there's this whole process, I guess, is what I'm trying to say that you went through. Uh, and nowadays, it's kind of it's kind of down to, you know, a quick, you know, a quickie, uh, a high and by. And uh, so, this handing out the business card is my is the best way of 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 making a a, a full introduction. And uh, it kind of skips a lot of intermediaries. And uh, then if they want to see the work in person, you know, then it kind of is back on track with how we used to do things. But uh, introductions have changed quite a bit. Yeah, but James's website is bunganuckstudio.com. And I'll put the link in the, in the description. Bunganuckstudio. Um, yeah. Cool. And it, yeah. And there's a, you know, a number and a lot of images and there's also a, a great artist statement and that little bit i read about james if you'd like to reread it it is uh it's on his, his website okay well um yeah man so what have you've been working on a website you've been painting you've been hanging out in maine oh there's some really nice play uh pictures of james's you know acreage or this the area around the studio and it's it's pretty amazing. It's kind of worth uh, yeah, checking it, out the website just it, just for that. It's a beautiful beautiful plot of land. Uh, um, that's uh, 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 is my wife's uh, family's land. It's been in her family for uh, six hundred years, roughly. Oh man, uh, yeah. Uh, so it's it's pretty. Pretty awesome. It was a farm, a working farm, up until her father passed uh, several years ago, and uh, a lot of the trees and whatnot have grown back. And it, it abuts the uh, McQuaid Bay. It's called uh, on the ocean uh, here on the Atlantic Sea Coast. Okay. Um, I yeah. have to say, I do miss the I do miss the plains. Um, <laughs> Especially during uh, the storm season, you know, oh. like a good thunderstorm in, in the plains of South Dakota. Are you kidding? I would think the Northeast would have some nor'easters or something that would. <laughs> you get big storms, but it's like there, there's so many trees, Paul. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it was kind of shocking at first. Trees you know, are a problem. Trees. Yeah, they, they, they block the view of. <laughs> I'm now understanding what John Denver went through and hacked them all down there in, in, in Denver. Uh, yeah, I know we yeah. were. You we wanted we a start, view. We started looking at places up in the hills around here. And um, I didn't realize how claustrophobic 
I I was around lots of trees <laughs> and, and in the middle crazy. of the hills. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how claustrophobic uh, uh, y- you can feel sometimes. And then it occurred but, to me that all my favorite places to hike are kind of on the edge of the hills, you know. So you get you get a little bit of 50-50? So I can hike up and get a shot of the plains. There you go. <laughs> so I can see, you know, for 100 miles. The natives used to look inward and you're looking outward. Looking up, looking out. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean... It's not, I mean, but considering everything, it seems like you're doing pretty well. You're still working, um, still painting. Um, I mean, is there anything in specific you've been doing to keep your spirits up or any anything you could recommend to the rest of us? Or Oh. I, like, I personally wouldn't be one to ask this question, but I thought, <laughs> you know. I don't think I'm one to to ask that question either yeah okay it's pretty right. uh i i haven't uh i haven't painted much this last year it's been the first year since i probably paint started painting that uh i've i've had a prolonged uh i wouldn't say blockage but uh uh just um uh you know you got to be kind of comfortable in the studio yeah and and I just uh, uh, I, the tension is is so uh, palpable, you know it, uh, um, that uh, uh, it's it's kind of kept me out of the studio. Uh, I've only started getting back in uh, here around Christmas time, and have uh, been able to finish a painting already. So I, you know, it's it's uh, things are coming back. Um, I don't think it's just because of the change of the guard. I think it's uh, uh, that helps. Um, it's been replaced by another tension uh, with the um, possible uh, insurgencies or whatever you want to call them that uh, we have to look forward to. Homegrown terrorists. It's a new world, man. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to stay focused on. It is. That's on the work. that's what I was that's exactly what I was trying to find was focus. That's 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 what I was, the word I was trying to find is focus. Um it's been been uh, lacking. But uh I've been out too long, so, you know, for me, uh so I have to get back to work. Um yeah, you know, it seems like the some of the people I've been talking to have sub. You know, they're maybe still working, but they're drawing. You know, or right. working on smaller, and that seems to be where I was at. Um, I'm not sure why. I think maybe, you know, working on a large canvas seems kind of grandiose to me. Anyway, it seems like, what's the point? Who am I right now? Yeah. And um, what's what's the of, of of what we're doing in you know in the face of all this uh, strife going on in our country and yeah. around the world but particularly here at home and um so i don't know somehow the you know yeah drawing and uh smaller maybe mixed media or something just seems to it's an act keeps a guy busy but it's not like um i don't know it's maybe it's a way to sidestep <laughs> you know what 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 you know a person is normally an artist what i'm normally doing anyway but um yeah well hey we've got your website i don't know do you want to i think i'm going to try to keep this to about 20 minutes it seems like the 20 minute mark okay. is pretty sweet but i've we've got your website is there maybe do you want to say a little bit about your painting um any painting in particular or um just in nope. general that i could before we take off call it good um i i guess i i uh uh not really um 
I, I um, not not in, about any, anyone in particular. Um, I haven't been very happy with the work done this year, which I guess you could probably uh, gather. Um, um, so I'm probably going to end up uh, repainting them. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know why not you know it's not uh, hey do you want to I, I never talk got about, well actually that's a really great thing to talk about um every, you know every once in a while somebody will ask me about you know the texture on my canvas and how i get it and if i use like some kind of oh. paste or if i'm you know and i'm like well you know it's just that there's a lot of paintings under that painting <laughs> and yeah yeah it's uh, it's not a yeah it's uh it's it's built up by by layers of frustration uh and and moderate success you know you just but it's just you know it's uh i i can remember uh seeing uh you know we're growing up in the midwest you know or even living in the midwest it's kind of hard to get out and see uh, real art, you know, I mean, uh, 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 art, yeah. art that we, we look at in books. Um, I can always, I can always see your paintings, which are, are very good. Uh, um, hey, you know, what I mean, was as far as your first memories of, you know, maybe being in a museum and seeing a painting and, and thinking, wow. Well, it was high school, and I was uh, uh, in a group called Future Problem Solver Solvers, and we yeah. won the uh, won the state championship. So we went to the nationals, which were held in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. And uh, I went wandering around Ann Arbor and wandered into the uh, University Art Museum, and was floored by the size of these paintings. Uh, but I was also really nonplussed about it uh, because it was a show of a uh, of a uh, uh, minimalist, hmm. and so not having been introduced to art, you know, at all. We didn't have any art in my high school. Yeah. Uh, uh, not so. Not being introduced to art at all, I, I walk in and there's these big canvases that are, you know, uh, basically, you know. Uh, thin thin layers of paint and uh, not a lot to show for that uh, yardage. Who's that uh, Barnett so, Newman guy? Uh, that Barnett Newman guy. I'm thinking. Uh, I think there was a probably a Ryman in there. Okay. And um, maybe some early uh, um, I, I'm dropping names here. Uh, but it anyway. But uh, but they also had uh, the the uh, the print series by Max Ernst called the Glove. Do mm. you recall that? No. It's it's a it's a tale of uh, I think it's Ernst. I think it's Ernst. Ernst or Goya. I think it's Ernst. Anyway, it 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 follows this white glove through his various uh, these various vignettes that the artist creates. And they're they were really really beautiful prints, and that that struck me, you know, at at a young age, you know, I, I guess I was like maybe uh, fifteen or sixteen, uh, and and already, you know, I, I did a lot of cartoon drawing and whatnot, and so I was really drawn to the uh, to the line usage, and uh, immediately began using that same technique in my own drawings, the shading and whatnot. Um, uh, cross hatching, all this sort of thing, which I learned from from that. So I guess that would be my my first real experience with art. It was it was it was it was, it was very much so foreshadowing my my lifetime experience with art, which is both of a uh, great disappointment and grand. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and and uh, right, grand expectations and uh, and sometimes rewards. <laughs> well, it's interesting that, you know, you would have been, your first experience would be with a graphic, more of a graphic medium, like yeah. printmaking. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, I guess I, I uh, had thought about printmaking. Well, actually, I hadn't thought about art at all uh, when I went to school. Um, well, that's, that's not quite true. I thought about art. I took art classes because I always wanted to take art classes. And as I said, they weren't offered in my high school. But uh, I, was, I was yeah. just taking them to experience it. I wasn't really expecting to be where I'm at now. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous. Yeah, it sucked me in. <laughs> and I and I found I, I was much more drawn to painting than the process the process oriented uh, arts like uh, printmaking or paper making or uh, anything like that. I like the more I like the immediacy of of painting. Yeah, so you went from Max Ernst printmaking, black and white, graphic images, um, kind of more of a direct process, direct medium, to painting. And painting, of course, you know, there are approaches that are more direct than others. But, you know, yeah. like the, the idea of painting over, you know, portions, like completely obliterating um, parts of a painting or entire, you know, mm -hmm. paintings, you know, is a real indirect method, an right. indirect way of thinking. What, what do you think, um, pulled you in that direction? I think I, I, I felt like it was more honest. Um, might be a strange way of, of, of saying it, but, uh, it just felt, you know, it's uh, like in, in printmaking and whatnot. Uh, I think I'm saying that word too much. In printmaking and and other other mediums, uh, it seems like uh, you you kind of hide the process. The processes are are hidden mm. and left to the back room. And uh, I like I like painting because it's it's all there uh, on the surface. Like you say, you know, as people say, "Wow, how'd you get that great texture?" Well, I killed a lot of paintings to get to it. You know, and uh, that's 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 pretty, you know, that's that's pretty honest. I mean, that's uh, you're not hiding anything. You know, you're you're painting over something, but it's still coming through. Yeah, um, there's a residue. So I just, it, yeah, it's a history. It's a history, um, and I like that. It's interesting that you you think of it as being more honest. I've always thought it is of it as kind of a sleight of hand almost. Even though I mean there isn't really any uh you know to get that kind of um you know to de develop that kind of history on a canvas, I don't think you can you can cheat or you can take shortcuts. But at the same time, sometimes like with me, I feel like it's creating a little bit of uh I mean, because in the end, you don't want like it, it to look like, you know, you want people to be like, wow, it, this looks like this looks really immediate. Um, it's right. really fresh. You know, well, I mean, like with de Kooning, you know, I think about, you know, the first de Kooning I saw when I was first introduced to him, I, you know, I had this idea of this guy that was, I'm probably going to get into trouble here because I know you know more, more, know more, way more about de Kooning than I do. But, you know, like he was an action painter, right? So his approach to painting would be basically like really physical and really active. And like he would probably attack the canvas and these things would just happen, right? And then right. the more I read about him and the more I, you know, hear people that knew him talk about the way he worked, it seemed that like he spent a lot of time just looking at paintings, his paintings, a lot yes. of time kind of planning that next move. Well, and he would use, uh, use the Valium uh, to, to paint out, you know, to, to, to practice painting one side of the painting or to pull off another part of the painting and stick it on. I mean, he, 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 was, he had a process like we all do. You know, I mean, he's... Um, but in a way... Make it, less it was almost like that made it even more magical to look at, you know, when I would yeah. be fortunate enough to encounter one of his paintings, the idea that, 
you know, he actually, you know, these images are more calculated and more thought out and there's less left a chance maybe than, um, like I thought, or I thought. Right. Well, I think, uh, getting back to where we started, uh, as far as, uh, obliterating, you know, painting over parts of the painting, um, I always felt like that was a, a bad on me, you know, that I was uh, indecisive or um, uh, that I, 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 I should know better, <laughs> uh, basically, you know. And um, I saw uh, um, it was an early aughts, early aughts, yeah, early aughts uh, that I saw a Hans Hoffman show in Des Moines. It was from mm. the Berkeley collection. And I, I love Hans Hoffman. And um, but I hadn't seen very many. I, I one or two. This was a whole show of them, so it was pretty exciting stuff. And as I started being able to really look and spend time with the paintings, I could see where he would paint over had painted over old paintings. And I could see, you know, what, what appeared in the in in a reproduction as a beautiful swath of blue is actually you know mm. a swath of blue that was painted over uh something else because you could still see the the brush strokes that came through and uh that made me feel really good <laughs> oh you yeah know, it's uh i figured if uh you know it, it's it's, it's kind of like uh, oh okay well i guess i'm not you know a slouch you know a slouch yeah Oh, you know, and then I think it's the, another um, part of the process. Yeah, and then um, you know, you end up with uh, you know, this idea of an object that can't really be uh, translated fully into a photograph or a two-dimensional image is really um, right. There's it's it's, it's uh, you know, you're always going to miss something, um, but and that's that's the case with paintings too. Uh, you know, this was a nice show. It was uh, uh, not crowded, uh, just the opposite. Um, and, and so I was really, really able to spend time with the paintings and and look at them. Uh, same thing, they, they had a, a Joan Mitchell show, uh, I think it was that same year uh, that I went down and, and again, had a, the great fortune to spend a lot of time uh, with the paintings and, and really look, uh, really look at them. That, yeah, uh, that's a that makes a big special difference. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a rare thing, unfortunately. Mm, more, yeah, well, <laughs> maybe maybe now not so rare. I don't know. I haven't been to a museum in the last few months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had, there is a, there is a Cy Twombly show. There was a Philip Guston show. There was a, 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 a Sterling Ruby show and a, there's a, another show. I can't remember what it was, but they were all uh, they were all coming to Boston this summer, and I, I live about uh, two and a half hours from Boston. Mm. Uh, so I was I was really pumped about seeing these these art shows. These are all artists that I, I like, uh, if not love, and uh, hadn't seen much work uh, uh, from them. Um, so I was really excited about the chance to to see uh but that all kind of went away with the covid yeah um which i, I know guess, I, you know yeah it's kind of um i yeah that's kind of what i'm missing right now is just getting out yeah getting to you know going to kansas city or minneapolis or yeah seeing art i'm missing that terribly yeah but even like the Nelson Atkins is getting to the point where it's sort of a, you know, Wednesday, Monday, or well, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, pretty quiet. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know. Packed. Packed. Which is, I mean, I guess it's good. It's good for the institution. Yeah. But I, it's good for the institution. <laughs> bad for us, right? <laughs> I kind of miss the days when you could be in there on a Sunday afternoon and. Hear a pen running. drop? Yeah, basically. But. Yeah. I'm kind of, yeah, that's, I don't know. In the long, I mean, I'm sure that's not good for the big picture, but okay. No. Well, hey man, I think maybe should we call it? This was good. 
Okay, good. Yeah, it got a little dark. I'm sorry. What? Your lighting? It was yeah. good. It made you look like a, I don't know, maniacal. Like, a, well, I mean, you probably, if that land's been in the family for 600 years, you're probably like an archduke or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think that's lighting appropriate to, uh, yeah. Landed, uh, you know. Landed gentry? Sure. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's a uh, it's in her family uh and and when her mom passed away she built a trust up so the property and everything everything on is paid for by this trust okay so we're basically we're basically renters oh uh, that's on this well, it's still neat to be in a place like that where you have some connection family connection oh yeah. you betcha in, uh to, there's my minnesota right now um shoot yeah i'm kind of i think our connect also i think our connection is kind of uh, internet wise is is getting a little flaky so it's been good yeah. it's been good it's been good talking to you you want to say goodbye to everybody wave waving the thing wave yeah you'll wave okay good i like that <laughs> all right thanks james thank you paul i really Take care man it Okay, I'll talk to you later. Actually, don't go anywhere, but I'll talk to you later. Yeah, bye. Bye.